Welcome, dear viewers and fellow Emily Dickinson enthusiast. This is Poetic Duchess. Today, I hope to take you on a captivating sojourn into the enchanting realms of Emily Dickinson's poetic universe, where each word is a brushstroke, painting vibrant landscapes of nature. As we traverse the delicate tapestry of her verses, we'll witness not only the beauty of the natural world, but also the raw emotions stitched into the fabric of her words that oftentimes transforms her natural landscapes into metaphors of sadness, deep thought, and beauty. Join me in this poetic odyssey, where we'll explore the profound connection between nature, emotion, and the artistry of Emily Dickinson's top 10 poems on nature. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that although I do my best at creating analysis of these beautiful poems to the best of my ability, poetry is an art that has many facets. What one sees as dark, another may see as their light. These analyses are made through countless readings and explanations that have been given, taught, or understood, not just by myself, but others as well. If your interpretation of the poem differs from mine, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've been enlightened by the beauty of Emily's words. Now let's get started, shall we? In no particular order, poem one is a bird came down the walk. An excerpt of this poem is as follows. A bird came down the walk. He did not know I saw. He bit an angleworm in halves and ate the fellow raw. A brief analysis of this poem shows the speaker's experience with a captivating yet uneasy encounter with nature. Observing a bird's predatory actions, the speaker senses the delicate balance of beauty and peril in the natural world. The bird, both predator and prey, embodies the dualities of nature. While the speaker is charmed by the bird's elegance, the creature's predatory nature introduces an element of fear. This intricate interplay between fear and wonder unites the speaker and the bird emphasizing the inherent duality of the natural world that both fascinates and unnerves. Poem number two, Nature is What We See. A short excerpt of this poem is as follows. Nature is what we see. The hill, the afternoon, squirrel, eclipse, the bumblebee. The analysis of nature is what we see Emily Dickinson explores the paradox of nature's immediacy and inexplicability. While humans can perceive and categorize elements of the natural world, the speaker contends that nature's true essence, its simplicity, transcends human comprehension. The poem rejects conventional definitions and suggests that nature is a divine and harmonious force, defying linguistic expression. Despite our instinctive familiarity with nature, the poem emphasizes the impotence of human wisdom in articulating its profound simplicity and celebrates the awe-inspiring mystery inherent in the natural world. In our poem number three, it's titled, Why? The poem begins with, The Murmur of a Bee. A witchcraft yielded me. If any ask me why, t'were easier to die than tell. In Why by Emily Dickinson, the poet explores the profound impact of nature on human emotions. The murmur of a bee and the red upon the hill symbolizes moments of awe and beauty that defy easy explanation. Dickinson suggests that certain experiences in nature hold a mysterious power, rendering words inadequate. The poem prompts reflection on the transcendent and spiritual dimensions of these moments, cautioning against dismissing their profound impact. Emily's poem for Growth of Man Like Growth of Nature begins with Growth of man, like growth of nature, gravitates within. Atmosphere, the sun endorse it, 
bit it stir alone. In Growth of Man Like Growth of Nature, Emily Dickinson reflects on personal and societal renewal, celebrating liberation and creation. The poem uses nature metaphors to convey the cycles of growth, death, and decay. Dickinson suggests that both individual and collective aspects must face challenges like revolution to avoid stagnation. The poem takes a slower, more personal tone, emphasizing that the personal growth relies on inner determination, faith, and courage. Despite an external audience that can offer no help the poem reflects Dickinson's sense of self-reliance, subtly distorting reality in its quietness. Poem number five, The Butterfly Upon the Sky. An excerpt of this poem is as follows. The butterfly upon the sky that doesn't know its name and hasn't any tax to pay and hasn't any home. A butterfly upon the sky, the delicate butterfly serves as a metaphor for fleeting beauty and the potential for joy. As it soars in the vast sky, the poem suggests a theme of liberation and overcoming challenges, symbolizing the ability to rise above sadness. The imagery of the butterfly conveys a sense of lightness and freedom, emphasizing that Beauty can emerge even in life's vast expanse, offering solace and hope. In Dickinson's poem number six, To Make a Prairie, begins as follows. To make a prairie, it takes a clover and one bee, one clover and a bee, and reverie. The reverie alone will do, if bees are few. The exploration of Dickinson's minimalist yet profound expression of the delicate balance in nature and the role of imagination is key in this poem. An interpretation of this poem's themes of simplicity, contemplation, and the creative power of the mind allowing anything to be possible. Poem number seven, Mother Nature, is as follows. Nature, the gentlest mother is, impatient of no child, the feeblest of the waywardest. Her admonition mild, in forest in the hill, by traveler is heard, restraining rampant squirrel or too impetus bird. I have read many analysis of this poem, and I find it hard myself to put my feelings into words. But from what I've come to feel in Nature, the Gentlest Mother, is Emily Dickinson portrays Mother Earth as a nurturing figure, patiently caring for all her children despite their impact on the planet. The poem underscores the harmony between nature and humanity, emphasizing Mother Nature's unwavering support, even when faced with environmental challenges. Dickinson skillfully employs personification, vivid imagery, and occasional rhyme, creating a poem that resonates with readers through its relatable and captivating depiction of the interconnectedness between nature and its inhabitants. Poem number eight. The Wind Begun to Knead the Grass. An excerpt of this poem is as follows. The wind begun to knead the grass, as women do a doe. He flung a handful at the plain. In The Wind Begun to Knead the Grass by Emily Dickinson, the wind's action on the grass symbolizes a dynamic interplay between nature and life Beyond the literal, it metaphorically suggests unseen forces shaping existence, possibly carrying religious undertones. This interpretation aligns with Dickinson's penchant 
for exploring profound themes through nature offering viewers a contemplative entry point into the intricate weave of her poetic expression. Poem number nine, A Light Exists in Spring. A light exists in spring, not present on the year at any other period. A short analysis of this poem in A Light Exist in Spring by Emily Dickinson, the portrayal of a transcendent light in spring carries metaphorical weight. This light may symbolize spiritual illumination or the renewal of life. Dickinson's exploration of nature intertwines with emotional undertones, evoking a sense of hope and rebirth potentially resonating with themes of spiritual renewal and the profound emotional impact of the changing seasons. Last, but certainly not least, poem number 10, by homely gift and hindred words, goes as follows. By homely gift and hindred words, the human heart is told of nothing. Nothing is the force that renovates the world. A short but impactful poem by homely gift and hindred words by Emily Dickinson emerges a masterpiece showcasing her unique ability to convey complex ideas through simple yet powerful language. The poem explores the expression of love through impetuous gestures emphasizing the significance of everyday acts over grandiosity. Through the recurring theme of longing, Dickinson suggests that love transcends the present, delving into the past and future aspirations. The poem's portrayal of love through voiceless words, silent touch, and tender glows underscores the depth of connection beyond verbal communication. It concludes with a sense of mystery, asserting that love, though unseen and unheard, remains a constant force watched and tended by its own. Dickinson's poetic genius shines through as she captures the profound complexities of human emotion with beauty and depth. So as we conclude our journey through Emily Dickinson's enchanting nature poetry, let's reflect on the profound emotions these verses evoke. Dickinson's ability to intertwine nature with human emotion creates a tapestry of feelings that transcends time and resonates with each of us. Nature, in her poetry, becomes a mirror reflecting our joys, sorrows, and the sublime beauty found in the ordinary. Nature, with its simplicity and complexity, has been a muse for poets throughout history. I encourage you to embrace the beauty around you, to find solace in the rustling leaves, the gentle breeze, and the vibrant colors of the natural world. As we bid adieu to this poetic pilgrimage, let's carry with us the echoes of Dickinson's verses, where nature and emotion are intertwined like vines in an eternal garden. May these poetic revelations inspire you to seek the profound and the mundane, and find the beauty of your own emotions reflected in the mirror of nature. So as always, stay inspired.